What's up, good people and trolls? You got Lavelle here, aka Bell, and welcome to my channel, The Evolution of Bell. Yes, I am back with another video, and today we actually have a video of my commentary of Tim's last court hearing, which was on this past Tuesday, October the 13th. Oh my God, the trolls have been busy. Oh my God, they're like invading our space. So, disclaimer for the strangers and haters, because this is my channel, there are certain activities that I will not tolerate in the space of the EOV family and in the comments section. And one of those things is accusing me of clickbait when you are uninformed. Those who are already a part of the EOV family are already aware that I post reaction videos to the Welcome to Sweetie Pie series and that we resumed them a week ago and that I post them when I can get around to it. It just so happened that the last video I posted landed on the same day of Tim's court hearing, which I was paying attention to in that way. And so it was not meant to be clickbait, it was a coincidence. But what I don't appreciate is being accused of clickbait when it's not necessary. We have videos, we do commentary, and I get views, so I don't need to do clickbait. So please behave nicely in the comments section and do not accuse people of things when you're uninformed and we'll get along. Otherwise, you will be blocked. So with that, because we don't want to give negative energy too much attention, but we have to also set the record straight and also teach people how to treat us. So I had to state it. So sorry for those of you who are used to us showing love and being funny and lighthearted, but sometimes you got to check it itch. <laughs> so let's get into our commentary. So as I stated, James Timothy Norman finally appeared in court on yesterday, October 13th, at 2.30 p.m. for his detention hearing. The federal magistrate, Judge Nanette Baker, heard the arguments from both sides. They then reviewed some of what occurred in the previous attempts to have hearings, and it was stated that Tim was absent from one of the court hearings due to a medical issue. So now I'm wondering, are they alluding to him having COVID, or is it that he claimed to have COVID? Like, what would be the medical issue that would cause him to not be able to attend court. And because he said no when the judge asked him if he had any medications that he was required to take, it makes me think whatever illness he was claiming would have been something of a temporary nature. And I know that COVID's going around and I remember something I heard that was alluding to COVID being related to the medical issue. So who knows, I don't know if that will come out later on and we'll find out if he was claiming to have COVID or just using it as an excuse. However, no matter what, I think it's clear to us at this point that Tim was delaying appearing at those other hearings because he was obviously trying to secure the attorney that he now has. In the hearing, Tim did speak himself and he spoke directly to the judge and he did plead not guilty to conspiracy to use interstate commerce facilities, which in layman's terms is the use of those burner phones across state lines to commit the murder. And he also pled not guilty in the commission to commit a murder for hire plot. And as far as the information we're hearing out there in regards to Tim and Terrica possibly being charged with the death penalty. So the request for a death penalty charge had to be sent to Washington DC for consideration and a final determination. And that is the process in a federal case. However, due to the presidential election, a delay in that process is expected. So while we wait on that, make sure you go out and vote if you haven't already. Early voting has started in most of your states. Get out there and vote. So what they are saying is it's actually rare for Washington DC to return a decision of the death penalty in most cases. So what that probably means is maybe Tim and Terrica won't actually have a death penalty with this and it may be life sentence, but we'll find out, we will find out, but there may be a delay with that. However, in the case that it does become a death penalty case, Tim's lawyer is requesting a learned counsel, which in short basically means he is asking for additional counsel funded by the government, which would be a specialist in death penalty cases to assist him with Tim's case. However, if Washington DC decides not to seek the death penalty for Tim, then that additional counsel will not be necessary and will not be granted. Now, in regards to Tim's bail, I found this to be interesting because Tim's attorney was arguing basically that Tim is not, in his opinion, not mine, probably not yours either, <laughs> but is not a flight risk because he has deep roots in St. Louis, of course, because he was raised there, of course he would, 
and he says that he has about 20 relatives that he could stay with. I'm like, is that true? Did y'all ask these people? Or are y'all just counting people? Because they might slam the door in y'all face. <laughs> if, you come, if you come trying to bring Tim to their house, how about this? <laughs> you, you remember your cousin who murdered your other cousin? Yeah, he, he, he needs to stay here. <laughs> like, never. So, but I don't know. It feels like basically the attorney is just throwing everything at the wall at this point, trying to see what will stick. He was also saying that and this is this for me is a revelation and it may be for some of you where the attorney said that tim would be able to stay with his mother ms robbie which to me unless this is i mean they were under oath so i would assume this is the truth unless tim lied and we know he lies um but this would mean that miss robbie is actually still riding with tim in this situation and willing to house him which to me means that She's fighting for his freedom. And it makes me also think that where we, you know, I was personally trying to figure out like, where's this money coming from? And many of you have asked that question too, or have been trying to like think through, where's this money for the attorney coming from? That makes me say that there's a pretty good likelihood that Ms. Robbie is actually flipping the bill for this attorney as well. And Tim's attorney also stated that, you know, Tim has two little boys and that they would be able to come visit him if he were in St. Louis. And then that's like, well, did Janae agree to this? Like, because we already know she was having a problem with TJ coming over to Tim and Ms. Robbie's house prior to this whole murder for hire plot coming to our attention. So, I really think now she would have an issue with it. So I kind of feel like, did the attorney confirm with these people? Hell, did they even confirm with Ms. Robbie? We don't know for sure, but it will be interesting to find out. And I'm sure once we hit the trial, we will know for sure, like if she's showing up and, you know, and sitting on his side of the courtroom and rubbing his back or whatever. <laughs> But we, we will know, we will know for sure. All things will reveal in time, we know this. And there was one contradiction I heard when like reading the different articles. One was stating that he would stay in St. Louis with Miss Robbie and work in the restaurant. And then I read another article that was saying that he would return to Jackson, Mississippi to work that restaurant because that's his business. So I'm not sure which version was true or if that was like misunderstanding by the reporters. However, I think it would be asinine for him to be able to go to Jackson, Mississippi to supposedly wait for his trial because to me, that's a whole lot of flight <laughs> risk options. If he gets on that flight and says he's going to Jackson, Mississippi and jumps out the plane somewhere in between. Yeah, I don't trust that at all. I think it is best in this situation that Tim Norman stay incarcerated until we're able to prove that he's not guilty of all of the stuff that points towards him being guilty. However, to me, this is a case of guilty until proven guilty because we don't even have all the evidence and it's like hard to deny all of the things that are pointing towards guilt. I just cannot imagine an alibi that gets you out of this. Like there is no glove to say the glove didn't fit. So how do you get out of this one? You're not OJ. So the prosecution side of this was very close to what I feel about all of this. So we're in total alignment. So they argue based on the luminous volume of evidence in this case, basically meaning a lot of stuff, plus the nature of this case and his previous criminal history that he should be held until trial. The judge then stated that she would take it under advisement, which means she's gonna consider it. She did not make an immediate decision and we basically have to wait for that, whether that's in another hearing or whether she sends it as a written statement or judgment. I'm not a legal, legal analyst, so I don't know the right term, but she basically also has the option to write her decision and then send it directly to Tim's attorney stating whether or not she is granting bail. But I do question like, why wasn't this shut down immediately? Unlike Terrica Ellis, who was turned down on three different occasions when she was trying to get bond. And I think Tim is way more of a danger to society than Terrica at this point, given this current situation. And then back to the Miss Robbie situation, if Tim is gonna live with her and then go work at the restaurants, to me, I'm like, who wants to see Tim in the restaurant? I mean, he's gonna literally need to be in the back of the restaurant washing dishes where no one can see him. And I heard that their business has already taken a hit. So could you imagine if Tim was actually there. I mean, I can see you're gonna have the people who are spectators, like, you know, the people who 
strangers who walk by our channel and try to view these videos and they make stupid comments in the bottom. We gotta have people like that, but then you're gonna have people like us who are like, I don't wanna be there if Tim is there and it's almost like we're celebrating him in a way. Like, eh, it doesn't feel good. So I could not see that being good for their business. So again, it was under oath that they stated this, but I kind of feel like maybe the attorney is throwing stuff at the wall because I think Miss Robbie's even smarter than that. And to be honest, his life would be at risk. Now, I don't think I've covered in any of my previous videos, but it has been stated that even at Andre's funeral, Tim had a bulletproof vest on. So if he needed it then when there was no real proof, just people and family members like feeling like he really did it and I don't think they really had evidence, and now we have things like really, really pointing towards it, I don't think he would be safe even. He may not make it to the trial, basically, is what I'm saying. So I don't think that's a good idea, even if they were to release him out on bail. I just think that's a horrible idea. First of all, releasing him out on bail is a horrible idea. And then you would double it up by having him work in the restaurants. And yeah, he would definitely need security and yeah, all of that. He would need like CIA level security. But what do I know? So just to recap of where we are now, what's ahead of us with this case, besides waiting to hear what the judge's decision will be about Tim's bail, we now are also waiting on the next pivotal point in this case, which will be the status conference hearing between the judge and the attorneys from all sides, actually in all three attorneys for all of the conspirators. And that's Wally and Terika and Tim Norman. So all of their attorneys will meet together on December the 2nd of 2020. And at that point during that meeting, they will get updates on where both parties are in regards to discovery and the pretrial items. And based on that, they will then potentially decide on a trial date. So December 2nd is a big day for us people. We will see where we are and hopefully then get the next court date and then hopefully then start to get our trial dates and that way we can you know, arrange our lives around it because we got people who think I'm going to arrange my life around <laughs> court hearings and not put out videos on the day that there has been a hearing. Like, tr trolls again. Okay, so with that, that brings my commentary on this because it's not an update. Don't treat me. I'm not doing updates. I'm not doing I'm doing commentaries. But that brings this commentary to an end. But what I will definitely say is I want to send shout outs to the other great YouTube content creators who are also following this story. They are sharing great information on this topic. And what I love is we all have our different approaches and perspectives to it. So make sure to continue to watch everyone and support them and show love across all of our platforms. Really cool and some of us are starting to slowly connect with each other. So this is good, this is good. We're growing, we're building. And what many of us have in common is that we're all truly fans of the Welcome to Sweetie Pies franchise and we adore the family and this this hurts us too of course they're dealing with it but we have feelings in regards to this too so with that if you've made it to this point in the video comment below unconditional love yes unconditional love because this is a story at the end of the day this commentary is a story at its foundation of unconditional love because obviously Miss Robbie has unconditional love for her trifling ass son, James Timothy Norman, and can you blame her? Does a mother stop loving their children because they've done something heinous and criminal and despicable and disgusting and horrible and deceitful and narcissistic? No! A mother's love is unconditional. And at the end of the day, we all deserve unconditional love as humans. Yeah, even if we don't want that person to get it in these times like this. It is what it is, people. But with that, if you are new to this channel and you have lasted through all of the shenanigans and my trolling the trolls, and you're still here and you're not turned off and you're liking what you're seeing, make sure to subscribe below and click that notification bell so that you will be aware of when I post new videos weekly and those ones sprinkled in, no matter what else is going on in the world, if I sprinkle a video in, it's gonna get sprinkled. So, also, if you are already a part of the EOV subscriber family, you're already a part of the notification game and the comment below game, thank you guys, I appreciate you. 
please always remember to provide that extra level of support by doing what? Liking the video below. Yes, because it helps the algorithm know that you guys enjoy what you're seeing and it spreads and we grow when we grow bigger and we end up with more haters, but we rise above all the haters. As Kendi Barris says, that's her song. <laughs> Anyway, with that, thank you guys. Thank you for dealing with my foolishness. I pushed through today. It was, I'm tired. <laughs> but I pushed through because I know I got to get this stuff out to y'all and people thought I was clickbaiting. And so I'm like, let me put out the video that I was going to put out anyway. So, and don't take too long because then they're going to really think I was trying to uh, do damage control of some sort. Oh, the haters. But <laughs> we are growing and that's what comes with the territory. With that, for those of you who give love and show love, thank you. Continue to love, grow, and share. Peace.